Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you doing? So we'll start with our webinar today. Uh, I am Shreyas Churi, president of ISA. And along with me, I have Harche Taneja. He's the treasurer of ISA. And apart from uh, us, we have a few of ISA officers who will be joining the call. And we have two guests uh, who will be assisting you with your questions related to the uh, college and the uh, immigration. So let's get started. So first of all, I would like to congratulate each and every one of you to uh, uh, to getting an admit into the UT Dallas. And for the people who are awaiting admits, I wish you all the all the best. And uh, today I'll talk about what ISA does and actually uh, how it can help you with your journey at UT Dallas. And along with that, um, I will uh, also uh, give you a few pointers as we go through the PPT and then uh, we'll be open for questions. OK. So uh, uh, today in the call, along with ISA, we have uh, Catherine uh, Russo. Uh, she is the assistant director of intercultural programs at UT Dallas. So she'll be here to answer your queries related to the uh, international student orientation or the pre arrival modules and uh, and all the all the events that happen on campus. And also we are joined by Josephine. Uh, she is the director of uh, ISSO. So I know a lot of guys are uncertain about what what uh, what the future holds for them and what kind of uh, you know immigration stat status uh, uh, will they be enrolled in if they start with their online semesters. So uh, she'll be here. Uh, she'll be joining in and she'll be answering you uh, with your questions. Just post your questions in the chat and uh, uh, by the end of the PPT. Uh, we'll be here answering all your questions. OK. So uh, ISA congratulates all of you and uh, like you have made it in one of the esteemed university. Yes, I call it esteemed because uh, it is one of the best and like it was my best decision to come to the university after all among all other admits. So uh, you have you have made it. You are, it's uh, it's good and uh, we are here to here to help and ISA has a motto that service yourself. So it will like it will go out of your, out of the way and will uh, help you with all your queries and all your uh, questions. I know there would there is a lot of you know a question mark uh, kind of in in front of everyone that what will happen like what what if I do this what if I do that, but don't worry like you can just shoot us an email or WhatsApp anytime you want and we are will be you know open ears open eyes and I'll uh, I'll make sure that our, our team. I uh, will be there for you when you need us. So I'll move forward. So today's topic of discussions uh, would be uh, more the mode of semester. I know uh, you might have got us uh, email from the university. We'll talk about that. And there are there are uh, different types of holds that you have on your account. So that holds are quite crucial because they won't let you register for your classes. So I'll talk about that. And uh, then you have a uh, university online portal. So there are specific online portals for the of the university uh, which uh, which pertain to different different aspects of what you have to do. So uh, we'll be talking about that and then uh, you I'll, I'll just uh, have a brief uh, you know talk about the what the academic calendar and how it looks and how how you have to see it. And uh, then we have a buddy program for ISA and it is like one of the uh, best things of from ISA uh, from when you start because uh, uh, it will give you a buddy uh, or a mentor type of person from with with whom you can talk about anything and everything. Uh, we'll talk about it later and then we have then I'll uh, just share your screenshot of what the student center looks like and uh, what what you have like once enrolled you'll get all the access of uh, student center and uh, then there are various fee payment methods. And uh, then then we have like I do, I think the housing options and application uh, that it won't apply for you at the moment. But just in case since even if you're not joining the fall semester, if you're coming for the spring semester, it is very important for you guys uh, to know about how the housing system works here. And like it's very different from back how how, how we have back in India. Uh, it, it like we have to apply online and how you can do it sitting at your home just to start with your process. And then we'll just take questions from you guys. So whatever you have, just post it in the chat, and uh, we'll be 
here to help and also we'll be sharing our list of FAQs after the webinar with you. So, OK, so uh, I'll just speak about more about a little about I say that we are a nonprofit social cultural association and uh, every year at in fall actually we have more than 1000 students coming in, but due to the current situation and the pandemic, uh, we won't be I guess not even a single uh, like a, a student coming in, but there might be people who are already here in United States and they might fly in with the domestic flights, but I, I, I can't see anybody getting a visa, but we are like uh, everybody is getting updates from the embassy that they might they are opening in October. So then there are not there are measures from the university that might allow you guys to come to fall uh, in October, but it, nothing is confirmed yet as yet. And uh, then we also help you with your temporary accommodations, airport pickups, and we have lots of fun activities throughout year. But this year might be different. Uh, but we'll be we'll make sure that we go out of our way and make your life better once you land here in Dallas. Okay, so uh, we uh, so after this, uh, I'll just move on with the semester because um, you have got like you see this link uh, from the university that uh, we have the choice. The students have the choice to choose from either online or in person or hybrid. So I guess uh, as being an international student, there there won't be a different interface while you go and see the enrollment uh, course registration uh, website. But I suggest to you that, that at, at the moment you just re register for the online classes and the online classes you can distinguish by uh, there won't be a room number in front of the online classes. Since uh, you can't come on campus, the hybrid and in-person doesn't uh, doesn't apply for you. So even if you want to, if you go and enroll for that, I guess you need to contact your graduate advisor and the graduate advisor will uh, like uh, enroll you on your behalf. So like he may approve or disapprove your enrollment. So just to be on a safe side and to have the online classes, I guess you guys have started with the online registration since it's very early uh, in this semester because as I came last time in the fall 19, I had to attend the orientation. I had to attend the graduate advising session. I had to attend uh, various, various lots of sessions. That's when and also the TB test. So since you would not be coming here, the TB test would be uh, applied to you from the spring semester if if that is that, that that is the case. So there are different type of holes and different type of things which uh, stop you from enrolling. But you guys for this semester have given a green uh, card to just go ahead and start enrolling. So I, at the moment, I recommend you all to you know start with uh, the online uh, online classes. And uh, for us also, the current students, we have all these options, but we still unsure about uh, what to choose. So it's OK, like it's like you have, you have been in a dilemma, like what to choose, what to do. But just shoot an email, just shoot a message on the group. Uh, we'll help you with regard. And also, uh, I'll talk about the buddy program, which will uh, you know help you very, very much. Of this. OK, and OK, so the holes. So there are three type of types of holes in your account. Like there is an international hold, there is an enrollment hold and there's a general hold. So the international hold is actually the hold from the orientation. I know that this time it is not mandatory for you guys to attend the orientation since you're not here and you might not be indulging in the uh, American culture. But I uh, but ISA highly recommends you to uh, you know go through the orientation because that has a lot of information about how the things here are. They are quite different from back in India and you need to go through that uh, orientation to know about what to expect, how to indulge in this culture, how to go about your uh, you know life here in Dallas in United States. So that is like uh, th there might be upcoming uh, orientation dates you might be receiving. ISA also is a part of that orientation on 14th of July uh, and on 11th of August. ISA has two ISA orientation for the admitted students and uh, then you have an enrollment hold. So what's an enrollment hold? The enrollment hold is that uh, you have to attend a graduate advising session. I guess this time around, maybe not. Maybe it is not mandatory since you have started enrolling for your classes. So it might just be that you have to contact your graduate advisor and then he might uh, enroll you uh, in, in on your behalf. So that might be one of the hold. And about the general holds, the general holds are actually the holds which are uh, related to your transcripts, your degree certificates, uh, your, your your like TB test if you come here. So these are the holes uh, apart from the international en enrollment hold. 
so 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 to remove such holes you need to contact your graduate advisor get get some help from the department which you are pursuing and um, just shoot a mail to them like if you have a, holes apart from these there might be some uh, different in your case so just uh, just look out for these holes because these are quite uh, important and they won't let you enroll like going ahead in your not just fall semester but in every semester before start of the enrollment you have to go through your uh, galaxy portal and see what kind of holes do you have and um, so oh the, so there are a lot of portals uh, in from ut dallas so starting from icomet uh, icomet is the portal where you see all your uh, all your i20 uh, details your visa statuses you have updated there and when you come here and you get an on campus job then you have to issue a service letter which go, which goes to the isso and approves it so there is a lot of things happening in icomet so it's basically your immigration status maintenance and it has a lot of uh, thing about change reprinting your i20 so uh, at the moment the people who have gotten the i20 uh, or the people who have don't even if they are not coming at the start of this semester and they might be arriving in october they might have to contact the university and reprint their i20 with a new new start date so these all things happen at icomet portal so you have to look forward to your icomet uh, uh, to to icomet uh, to all these details and then you have the galaxy so you will be playing with galaxy all throughout your journey in ut dallas and then you have like there is an applicant center and there is a student center in galaxy so the applicant center is before you uh, you know actually get enrolled and the student center comes into place when you start your classes and start your journey and start your curriculum so and and on e learning e learning is basically a, a platform where you have your online classes or even if you don't have your online classes you have all the details uh, you have all the um, things of your uh, subject selected uh, subjects and you have a specific section for your subject and it has an instructor name then the instructor posts various announcements on that and uh, there is there is assignment submission on blackboard collaborate like blackboard collaborate is actually a, a platform where you see the online classes and e learning is where you submit your assignments on all your documents so blackboard collaborate ha has played a crucial role after the pandemic hit uh, uh, all over the world that um, Uh, everybody switched from on campus to online and and since then we are doing uh, the on camp online uh, you know uh, the summer semester and the half of the uh, spring semester went online and it was like it was a good it was a swift move but to be honest like the we didn't held back and uh, we we completed our semester and also everything was managed very smoothly on blackboard collaborate so it is a good platform so there are two types of sessions which happen on blackboard collaborate uh the, it depends on the professor he might uh, have a recorded session and he might upload it on your uh, e learning and tell you to ver uh, verify that and just after you go through it he might have a short session that if you have seen the session we can come up with uh, brainstorming and questioning or a professor just takes out a ppt like i have just done uh, like here and he will start explaining the ppt uh, throughout the lecture and he might also have a pop quiz or a quiz uh between the uh, uh between uh the uh, between the lecture so blackboard collaborate and e learning uh, at the moment are most important if once you start your uh, classes uh, apart from galaxy so just look out and also on e learning you will be having the pre arrival modules so before you start your uh, like the course registrations i guess you need to do it it was mandatory for us maybe not be for you but the pre arrival modules have a lot of information about how to you know go about and like it, it like the orientation has a lot of information but before the orientation you should have a pre knowledge that is given in the pre arrival modules so uh, just you might have received an email from the icp that uh, kindly complete all this uh, steps before you start enrolling so apart from the portals we have this academic calendar so the academic calendar has a lot of dates that you can see in the in this uh, ppt that you have the start date for you for your course as august 17 and uh, you you see on that uh, on that uh, on the beginning of uh, the, the 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 calendar that there is a second eight week session uh, so on monday october 12 so like it might happen that once you start getting your visa appointments you might be allowed but nothing is confirmed that uh, anything that would be Uh, made uh, a decision would be made that would be sent to you officially by the university we are here just uh, you know we have we have got some information but nothing is confirmed yet but there might be possibilities it these are challenging times and everybody is you know uh, 
reacting to the way it is best for everyone. So you have all the things you have uh, in, in this academic calendar about your fee payment. So you can see that the fee payment is like, uh, I guess, 13th of August, the last day for you to pay your fees. And um, there are certain uh, there are like certain uh, uh, dates ahead of your uh, ahead of March, uh, sorry, August 13 for the people who have scholarships. So for people who have financial aid have some uh, deadline not not close to the start of classes, but after one week of class start of class. So maybe they might have of 25th of August or 24th of August uh, till that. So you also have the the right to drop classes after one week of class. It will all be explained to you in the orientation. So that is why I'm just uh, repeating one um, again and again that please attend the orientation because that that will give you a lot of clearer idea about how to go about your curriculum and how to stay uh, in status. So I know that right at the moment you won't have your visa. So that things really don't matter. But well, if you start in spring and it will be a hassle to you know go through all the things in the middle of your journey because we started in fall and before starting we knew all these things and that is why we keep the track of our uh, immigration status, our F1 status and uh, there are a lot of things that might get you away away from the F1 status. So just look out for the orientation. And like the, the important thing is that uh, in the two long semesters, fall and spring, you need to be uh, enrolled nine creditors uh, uh, like if you if you don't have an internship. So like first two semesters, nobody has an internship. Like uh, they, they are not allowed to have an internship. And also um, this, um, so at the moment there are certain uh, certain uh, you can even say courses who are who are allowed to have just 18 credit hours and they can start an internship in summer. Uh, like if you start an online semester and then you come for spring for the fall uh, for the on campus semester. And if you happen to be under that um, uh, under that list of courses, you can start your summer sem summer internship right away. But uh, it is it depends upon uh, so course to course. So I'll ha I have actually a website where you can just go and see uh, you are um, if you if your degree major is there in that list or not. So if you're starting online, if you're coming for on campus in spring, are you eligible for a summer internship or do you actually require to be present one year physically in the US? So uh, just, I, I'll just uh, redirect you to the website in some time or I'll just put in the chat. Um, also, we have the buddy program. So I just spoke to you about a buddy program while the starting of the meeting. So buddy program actually works like you have a you have a buddy or a mentor who is a current student or an alumni, and he might be having a he might have a lot of a lot of experience from his journey in Utah Dallas, and he is the best guide like a student who who came like you who who went through all these things, and he is there uh, like to help you. And there are like lots of students who want to mentor you guys, and we have sent out forms. We have a lot of people willing to do this noble work, and. Uh, and yes, uh, I guess Mohammed, uh, he's there with us. He's the public relations officer of ISA and he is looking forward into all this buddy program thing. So Mohammed, are you there? Hey, hi, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Uh, so hi guys, uh, my name is Mohammed Sharwala. Uh, I'm the public relations officer for uh, ISA for this academic year. Uh, I would just like to throw some light on uh, what buddy program is as uh, Shayash uh, actually told you about what buddy program actually means uh, is that it started uh, pretty uh, it, it is it started pretty uh, uh, in the in the beginning uh, uh, like four to five years back when the seniors thought that buddy program is something which which should be very uh, important uh, for the students uh, it's just like uh, you, you get a mentor um, so that they can guide you through uh, the process of coming here, uh, the documents which you have to carry, uh, where, uh, what documents do you, you need, you, do you need, where to submit those documents if you are here. So, but this time, uh, what we are planning is um, the buddies will most be important uh, for you to select the courses to help you through um, uh, through the doubts which you have in the courses as well uh, to help you through which courses will benefit you or which track you want to select and uh, things like that. So we are focused on uh, 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 getting in contact with uh, alumni who have already been um, actually uh, like through the courses uh, which you are going to be in. Uh, I'm also going to share you a link. There is a there is a link which is there on uh, 
the ppt as well i'm also i have also shared a link on uh, the chat meeting and uh, you can like register for the buddy program out there uh, we can then uh, uh, manage you or we can then assign you a mentee uh, a mentor um, uh, with respect to what a uh, program you are choosing which track you are going on and we have uh, actually specified a lot of things in this uh, buddy program uh, this time so it might help you to uh, actually go and uh, select the courses you want and uh, um, i guess that's it Shresh, about the buddy program okay, thank you thank you mohammed and he's working hard to make this work so kindly go through and fill out the form those who are like i know like you have started your enrollment for your classes and you uh, might be looking out for a mentor like we have been getting a lot of uh, messages from students that uh, what type of courses should i select and uh, like of uh, how this course is particular courses so be having a specific mentor you can uh, you can ask him anything and he'll be having a dedicated time for you so just go ahead and uh, uh, do that, like register it as soon as possible. And so I just uh, have a screenshot of a student center. So here you see that your uh, whatever academics, uh, like you have your transcripts, you have your subjects um, uh, selected and everything is listed in my academics. So whatever, uh, whatever subjects at the present semester are going on, you can see it in my academics. And management classes uh, actually redirects you to your course registration uh, link where you can register you for your classes, add or drop your classes. The bursars account, the bursars account actually is uh, uh, is a place where you get all the information for your fee payment and and your refund if you have something from the university. And then um, and then we have uh, financial aid and uh, like financial aid deals with all the uh, you know, all the things which you uh, like if you have a loan from prodigy finance a certain time so that also goes into financial aid so there are various to do list you have like you might have something on your on your student center or there's a task like you can see there's one to do and one hold so that likewise you might have for your profile so these are like these are the snapshot of a student center and uh, then uh, i have like we we have various fee payment methods so at the moment, the international wire transfer by Flywire is the best way possible for you guys to make the fee payment. And um, and then like uh, many don't know that, but college uh, like the university also has a short term loan which the university gives uh, for the people who cannot, you know, uh, have some problem in that particular semester. So you can get that plan also you can, or you also have the installment plan which has a $25 set of fee and you can pay it in like four or three installments. So these are the uh, options for fee payments, and I know this this thing might not be uh, applicable for you at the moment, but you in case uh, like you start looking for houses, these are the uh, common households which uh, have which, you, which which are around UT Dallas, and these are the popular places where the students reside. So the east side has a bus frequency of 30 minutes, and the west side of 20 minutes. But th but this might change. There are there are talks that uh, there are they increasing the bus services. Uh, the frequency might increase. The number of buses might increase. But these are the places where you can uh, go and actually search on a website that uh, just put the name of the website and it will redirect you to a particular uh, website where you can go and fill in your details and they will verify your student status and they might require a visa for that. So since you don't have a visa, I guess they won't give you a house at the moment. And this is a particular type of uh, portal. It looks like since uh, like in India, there is nothing of this sort. Just you just have to go to and talk to the owner and just pay him off or something or you just have to get into agreement everything is electronic here so you have to you have a login id everything service maintenance everything uh, goes into this portal so uh, your request or everything and this is a uh, just an example of how the rent agreement look like and like you have to your name is there and there's, it is a 13 to 14 page document and um, like these are documents like i20 passport and the visa stamp visa stamp actually is required but at the moment you don't won't have it so we really don't know about uh, uh, what what holds for you and uh, like we these are the type of uh, money transfer that are happening and um, the questions so before questions i would like to ask uh, Catherine and josephine to go ahead and uh, can they talk about themselves and icp and ISS so that students know about Hello, 
everyone. I'm Katie Russo. Shreyash must be mad at me. He's calling me Catherine. <laughs> you can call me that when you get mad at me, like my mom does. Oh, okay. But, oh, hello. I can see myself now. I was, yeah, I was sharing um, the so, yeah. Like he said, I am the assistant director for intercultural programs here at UTD. Intercultural programs has two main focuses. So first, we assist the transition of international students into the community at UT Dallas. So one of the ways we do that is through international student orientation. Um, Shreyash talked a lot about that, and I highly recommend it as well. This year, um, he also mentioned this, international student orientation is not mandatory for students who are entering in fall 2020. Um, and that's, of course, because of the current pandemic situation. We're trying to make it simpler for our international students to get into the university and get their classes and make sure that they are settled. Our international student orientation is online, so it's through the e-learning portal, which Shrash already talked about. We have three parts of it. So one is the pre-arrival modules. He mentioned this as well. And these, um, similar to this ISA presentation, kind of introduce you to some of the terms that the university uses, some of the things that are going to be helpful as you kind of navigate getting enrolled in classes and really understanding what the experience is going to be like. We also talk a little bit about how to get to UT Dallas. So you'll have access to these for the entire fall semester. You can go back and review them. Um, I know many of you aren't coming to campus yet. So then if you're coming in October or December, you can take a look and see some suggestions of how to get to campus, what to look for in housing, all those kinds of things to help you get settled. And then the second is our international student orientation modules. So those are also three through e-learning. All of this information is posted on our website, so please take a look. And those are similar modules to the pre-arrival modules. So you can watch a narrated PowerPoint narrated by me. I learned how to do this, guys. And then we also have folders of additional resources, and I am constantly adding resources to this folder. So as more departments give me information that will be relevant to you for the fall, I'm always going to put it there for you to look at anything that I think is necessary, even a campus map or a bus route, something. So please keep looking back at those. And then the most exciting part of our orientation, we're going to do some live webinar sessions, kind of like this. And those will also be through Microsoft Teams, which you do have access to, um, to download and to use from UTD. And so ISA is going to be participating in one session with us and they will be doing their own orientation then as well with a lot of information. But we will have other departments throughout the university who are here to help you as an international student, as a new student. So the Career Center is going to do one presentation and the Counseling Center. We're also gonna have a session all about online and virtual resources and kind of tips for success at UTD. Those will all be listed on our website, and so we'll be starting in a few weeks. I'm just waiting for the web developer to update our website, and you'll be able to access the link, and you'll be able to go through Teams either on your web page or um, on the actual Microsoft Teams app if you choose to download it. So you'll be able to attend that way and watch these webinars. We'll also record them and have them posted on YouTube so you can refer to them. If you can't attend for the one particular session, then you'll be able to watch it later. Um, trying to think of what else I wanted to talk about. Let me check and see if there's any questions. But I do agree with Shreyash. I know, Shreyash, I know some of those portals are very confusing. So e-learning is really good to navigate. Yeah. Um, and I do have one section of online orientation that talks about some of those resources, those virtual resources you might be using. So the, the e-learning, the Galaxy, a few others. So take a look at that because they will, it will answer some of your main questions. Um, and I also encourage you to explore the different websites. So the Intercultural Programs website, because we have a lot of links. And let me put that website in here. So UT Dallas, 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 UT Dallas
So you can explore our website. We have a lot of links and a lot of services for international students. So take a look and see what might be helpful to you. And then you can always email us at IC programs. Oh, got a new computer, guys. It's hard to type. Um, you can always email us. I put our email address in there as well. The second part that ICP does is global engagement for the university. So we put on training sessions and we do events that really foster that global community we have at UTD. So a couple of our biggest programs is iWeek, the shortened version of International Week, and that happens every April. And it is the best event. It is my favorite week. I don't think Shreyash got to participate as much oh, this year. Like, I, like, we didn't get to participate. I'm looking forward to it, but like we can, we can hope to have it next year. Let's see. Yes. So um, we did an online, a virtual iWeek where we got to have all sorts of events, but all virtual. But yeah. usually we have a big fair where everybody gets to represent their country and share food. And then we have a huge talent show, which ISA almost always wins <laughs> at the very end. <laughs> So we we really encourage you to participate. And all of this information is on our website. Yes. Something else we do, um, we do an iFriend program, so kind of like the ISA Buddy program, but we try to pair international students and American students to meet throughout the semester, hopefully become best friends. Um, and we're looking into how we want to do that virtually or accommodate for COVID this year. So you can take a look at our website and we'll be posting updates as soon as we can. Okay. Uh, take a look and see if there's any questions about what I talked about. Uh, I guess. I guess, yeah, you can help me. Oh, you know, guys, I'm going to give you our Instagram. So we have a program. Uh, we have a program coordinator, Tamara, who has been planning events every single week on Instagram. And so if you have Instagram or you want to create an Instagram account, I highly encourage you to follow us. Tamara has been doing live lunches twice a week. So around one o'clock p.m. Central Time. I know, oh gosh, that's much later. <laughs> that's like 11 p.m. or something, yeah, guys, yeah. I think. I, I don't know the time difference, but she has been doing, she'll interview staff from the university on Instagram. They play games. She teaches things. Um, just this week, she did one all about food shopping in the United States. And so what are the best places to buy food? And she also interviewed some student organization members about school systems in Pakistan. And so she has come up with some really fun virtual events. You can still attend even though you're a new st or an incoming student. So please follow us. And we also try to post other university information. So a lot of other departments are hosting events virtually as well. So you could also follow us and you might be able to see what some other departments are doing. And it's a lot of fun. I've been attending all of her events on Instagram and she is much better at it than I am. <laughs> yeah. So it was good to hear from you actually. And like you thank you for taking out a precious time of my personal life. Like it's a weekend and you have, uh, you have come here to help students. So thank you for that. And like we can move on with like Josephine. Uh, uh, she can talk about ISSO and actually uh, go ahead and introduce herself. Hi, Josephine. Thank Hi. you. Hi. Sure. I hope everybody can hear me OK. I'm going to give a warning. I'm going to give two warnings before I start talking. One, my internet connection is doing funny things so that if it gets a little um, difficult, I'll take the video off. Number two, I have a five year old daughter who might bust in here at any moment in her pajamas. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> um, so my name is Josephine Vita. I am the director of the ISSO. I've actually uh, been in at the university for about nine years um, and I have a background in immigration law. Um, I went to law school with a focus on uh, immigration work and I have been um, really fortunate and really enjoyed the time that I've had at UT Dallas for this many years. So uh, let's talk about some of the basic things that I think you all are interested in, but I'm sure there's also likely to be questions um, afterwards and I can help uh, answer some of them in the chat uh, if needed. 
So obviously you know about the F1 status. We're still going ahead and issuing I-20s for um, F1 status. We recognize that uh, some of you may not be able to make it. We are being very encouraged. We're seeing some people telling us they're able to get visa interviews depending on which country they're from um, in June and July, but we're also seeing other people saying September or August or January. So it's, it's obviously depending on where you are on the trajectory of the uh, of the virus and how the U.S. Embassy is going to open up. Um, because we weren't sure whether individuals were going to be able to um, arrive in the United States, we have um, what is called the FV visa, which is not an official visa. So don't think that it's anywhere that USCIS knows. Um, it's something that we put in our university to be able to identify individuals who will be studying virtually, but have the intention of uh, um, coming to the United States in F1 status. So it helps us differentiate our, our F1 prospective students from people who are internet only students who are doing their whole degree on the internet and have for, you know, it's programs that have been running for all this time. So we are still encouraging you to get the I-20, even if you're not able to physically arrive in the United States um, for the fall. And the reason is you have your CVS ID number, you can take the steps so that as soon as you are able to get a visa slot, you can go ahead and put in the information to apply for your visa. If you don't already have your I-20, electronic or otherwise, you're not going to be able to do that as quickly. We anticipate there's going to be a backlog, right? Not only of F1 students from going to universities everywhere, but business to visitors, you know, all kinds of people are going to be trying to get a visa to come to the US as embassies open. So we want you to have your everything ready so you can make your appointment as soon as possible. Um, if you, you know, we've heard, um, depending on where you are, there've been troubles with getting financial documents because banks close, et cetera. That's fine. If you're not able to get the visa, just get the documents and submit them to us when you can. There is no deadline for the I-20, uh, for you to give us the financial documents for the I-20. Now, if you're starting virtually, um, we're going to uh, put you in FV status, or you tell us that you're going to be in FV status, and then we can, um, uh, um, go ahead and give the I-20 for spring semester or whenever it is that you think you're going to come. Now, there is a question about the 16 week versus the eight week. So this is something completely new. We've never done this before, right? In the past, we've always had an I-20 for the first day of class. If students aren't able to make it, sometimes their department will write a letter and they may be able to come in the next, you know, a couple of days after the start of classes, but it's never really been more than a week or so. And then if you miss out that chance, you wait until the next semester. So all of us are having to be very adaptable and flexible as a result of this pandemic. And so what we did is when we went to DHS and he said, we want to allow students to be able to get I-20s for the beginning of the eight week term. And that has already gone through and we have the ability immigration wise to issue those I-20s for that second eight week term. Now, what we are waiting on is for some people, some departments, and depending on what classes you're in, you're going to be able to have the flexibility to do that. So say, for example, you're enrolled in your nine credits, you've started in August, you get your visa in September, you say, okay, I'm ready to come for the October start date, right? And the same as you would uh, for the beginning, you'd be able to come in the 30 days before the start of the eight week term. However, we need approval from your academic department that they can translate your online classes into in-person classes. Some of that is gonna depend on the specific class, because of um, if, if you're coming in and uh, uh, immigration is going to want to see, you know, that you're, they're likely going to want to see that you at least have some in-person classes to be able to need to come to the United States, right? Um, so then you're looking at, is there going to be spaces in the class? Because of social distancing, we're limiting how many people are going to wind up being in classes. So it's going to be a very much an individualized assessment by your academic department to say, okay, can we in the middle of the semester switch from the virtual to the in-person? I'm going to guess JSOM is going to probably be the most uh, able to adjust those types of things, right? Um, and uh, But we have been talking to all of the academic departments and hope that they're all are preparing to be able to assist students who are able to get that visa. Once we get the departmental approval, we issue the I-20 or we change the I-20 for that date 
and then you can go ahead and make your travel arrangements and come. So we'll see how this goes. I'm really hopeful, right? To be honest, it's something that not only for this period is going to help students who are having delays, but I've always, we've always had a number of students, especially from countries like Iran, who have a difficult time getting visas and their studies are always getting delayed. I'm hoping that we can build a system that works for all kinds of students who are not able to come on time, who can start virtually and be able to move forward. So I, I hope it's an innovation that works. Um, so however, but with that, you can only come at those beginning periods, either the beginning of the first day of class in the 30 days before that or the 30 days before the beginning of the eight week session. You can't come at other times of the semester. Um, if it's OK, can I just answer some of the questions I see on the on the conversation yes. chat? All right, so perfect. I'm just going to go from the bottom up. Can I join September uh, instead of October, August? Um, you can only join in the 30 days before the 16 week session starts or the eight week session starts. So that's your time frame. Um, how long does it take the I-20 after F financial affidavit and document submission? So it should take us two or three business days. We work Monday through Friday, although there are some times when we close. Like, for example, we close for uh, Juneteenth on Friday. So some of these American holidays might affect some things. Um, but uh, if everything is complete, you're going to get an email with an attachment for your I-20 saying here's your I-20 in digital format, um, or it's going to say we're missing some documents or we need something else. Please submit, resubmit it. Now, the digital I-20s is also a new thing, um, and uh, we have been told that the Department of State will accept them for the visa interview. We would like you to have an original one when you actually go for the visa interview. You can schedule a visa with a digital one, but our preference is to try to make sure you get a hand copy of the uh, a hand signed copy of the I-20 for the visa interview. So as you get closer to that date, right, let us know. Um, some countries are having still some mail delivery problems. I know a couple of weeks ago we got some return from India, depending on where you were in the country, they couldn't deliver everything. Um, but if we can get it to you, we will send it out, you know, uh, still by complimentary mail so that hopefully you can have the original when you have your visa interview. Um, OK, other questions I see. Uh, I was not able to locate FE visa and I comment. How do you register? Perfect. So if you have not yet ever uh, gotten your I-20, the new request form for the new I-20 has that question. So for those of you who are starting the process for the first time, it's all in the same e-form, right? When you're requesting your UT Dallas I-20. If you go to, um, can I share my screen real quick? Is that yes. okay? Right, okay, ahead, perfect. Yeah. Um, let me do that. Okay, can you see I comment right now on my screen? Uh, not yet, uh, yeah. yeah. OK, so you'll see there's three steps. So there's requesting your UT Dallas I-20, which is a main request financial affidavit, dependent and transfer. Even if you don't have dependents or transfers, just go through and submit them, right? So we know you've, you've, you've completed it. Um, and then the second section is about how to get your UT Dallas I-20. This one here, visa update, if you've already been issued your I-20 with the fall start date, and then you're like, no, I'm going to be doing virtually, go back to here, right? The same e-form select visa update and tell us that you're going to be starting virtually and then that will um, initiate the process right for us to tell you. Do you for example if you see right here you know do you anticipate arriving for face-to-face -face courses you're going to hit no right and then that will give us information we need to be able to update it so it's within the same packet of e-forms that you would fill out it's just in the third step OK, so let me see if there's any other questions. I don't want I know y'all I'm sure have other things to cover. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but let's see if there's anything else quickly. Um, yes, I think there's two about the how to let us know about virtual start three. All right, so I think maybe that was most of them unless you all have something else that I can answer. Yeah, like uh, there's one question that do we need to get a fresh I-20 issued specifically for online semester start or like they can uh, they can continue with this uh, I-20 they have. And mm -hmm. then, uh, so how do they like? Is, let's suppose I'm a student and I have an I-20 at my hand, uh, yeah. which is a physical I-20 or an electronic. And mm -hmm. now I want to do the uh, electronic V1, like the for virtual one. Yeah. So do yeah. I need to update it in the iComet portal? Because I can see that nobody, like some some people, are not seeing it. Yeah. So it's go. So what? In order to update it, you go to that third step and 
and, and fill out the one that says visa update, right? Oh, okay. And then if your financial documents are still within the last one year, you don't have to give us anything. We'll just go ahead and it reissue it. There's no additional things that are needed, right? Yes. If your financial yes. documents are older than a year, then we would need it. Now, yeah. you can do that any point. If it's right now, June, and you know I'm going to still be at home in August, right? If you want to wait to change the physical I-20, you can. You can still use that CVIS number to apply for the visa when you have the opportunity. And then when you're ready, you let us know, hey, I need my actual physical I-20 now. I've got my visa appointment scheduled for October. You know, ideally give us at least 30 days, right, to make sure it gets to you. Um, and then we can uh, update it then. But if you start virtually and your I-20 still says September, you know, still says August, and you know you're not coming until January, that's fine. Just give it, let us know in the fall and we'll, uh, by submitting the third part where it says visa update, and then we will update it for you. Perfect. I guess that clears a lot of doubt from the students. Like this virtual thing is a good thing, like to differentiate the students mm -hmm. and that can make the process very hassle free. Mm -hmm. And if we have like, I have a for I-20. Okay, so I guess, uh, I'm also now clear with the F1 FV visa and we, have, we had a lot of questions from this uh, from the students regarding this and it, it's like it's, it was good to have you both in the call so that did that eased our you know tensions about what to talk with the students and I guess now the students are better placed and uh, she, one, one student is asking that is there any last date for a FV visa do we have it? So so there isn't for us. The reason why we though want you to tell the departments is because they want to do the orientations. They're registering students for classes now, right? Um, especially people like JSOM and ECS. If you want to get your classes, unlike before when people had to wait until after they yes. get physical orientation, everything, they really want you to, you're able to more successfully compete against the Americans who are here, right? Because you can register right now. So if they know your FV, they can get your all the stuff sorted out and get you in classes and you can know what's going on. But there's no deadline, but it's to your benefit to do it earlier rather than later. And uh, like, uh, like from what I understood is that since they can't come to campus, uh, they would be highly recommended. Like high, I highly recommended to go and uh, go ahead and start registration for online classes and not the hybrid and on campus. So do they only have the option to select online and not the hybrid since they would be starting in the like it might they might start in the eight week session. So you have picked on something that is very complicated and there's there's still a lot of unknowns and I will tell you what I know and this is actually going to touch not only on questions for new students but questions for existing current students right okay. so right now Department of Homeland Security in the spring in March said forget all of those restrictions on online classes F1 students can take whatever classes you know wherever in the world because of this emergency and they extended that to summer they have not yet said what they're going to do with fall. Are they going to say, yes, you can take all online classes or you have to do a mixture of both or no, we're going to go back to the way it was. So okay. if we go back to the way it was where you're restricted to only three credits online, I think that a course enrollment that allows you to meet that, right? Even if you start virtually and the classes are also offered in a way that you can you can do it online, right? But it's coded as a face-to-face -face while you're outside the US. When you come to the US, then you can be in the classes in person. That is the safest, safe, the most the way you're most likely to be able to meet the requirements if DHS says that's what you have to do. But if DHS continues because there's still a pandemic and says, no, safety is more important, right? If yeah. you need to take classes, it doesn't matter whether they're coded as online or face to face or whatever, just, you know, you can take the classes, but you don't have to worry about the instructional type, then it won't matter to the answer to the question. So we have uh, the president, Benson, has already uh, reached out to our congressional representatives. They've reached out to DHS, UT system has reached out to DHS. DHS campuses all over the world, all over the country are saying, you all need to tell us what the enrollment requirements are for the fall because we're registering students now. So I wish I had an answer for you that was very specific. I tend to see, uh, I tend to think of things on a spectrum of risk. The, the least risky thing is to do something that will cover as many bases as possible, regardless of what happens, right? Yeah. Uh, and that would mean having your 
course enrollment, even if you're still doing it virtually, to have, you know, if you're graduate student, six credit hours that are face to face, but you're doing virtually and three credit hours, not more than three credits in an online format. OK, sounds good. There's one more question like I, I, have, I have no answer for that. Like with the F1 FV visa, will they be eligible for on campus jobs? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. And there's a, a variety of reasons. You know, those of you who yes. worked in the US on your first day, you have to do your I-9 where they have to verify yeah. you have yes, US work like authorization. There's, yeah. there's, there's no way you're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but for TAs and RAs, just know, because I know that's a number of, uh, of students, especially our doctoral students, you won't be able to start your TA and RA, but your tuition fees will still be covered. And then you'll be able to get your job when you arrive in the United States. Yes, 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 yes. And I see uh, one about FE and CPT. Can I answer that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Go okay. Ahead. So there's about five programs that changed um, their uh, rules. Actually, let me take a step back. CPT rules are to be eligible, you have to be main to have one year, one academic year of full time study in the United States. There is an exception that we have never used at UT Dallas, and that exception is if you're academic program requires immediate participation in CPT, right? And that's how the people, the schools who have day one CPT do it. They say on your first day of class, you have to do CPT or medical schools. On your first day of medical school, you have to do your residency, right? Now about five programs um, and at JSOM, they're gonna be marketing, ITM, Buon, uh, supply chain, management science. And then at ECS is gonna be computer engineering, I believe, right? They changed the rules and said, Instead of saying after 18 credits, you may engage in an internship. Now everyone is required at 18 credits in those degrees to do an internship. American students, international students, everyone is required. That means even if you start virtually and you do your nine credits in the fall, you come in the spring, you do nine credits in person in the spring, that summer you can do your internship. If you do nine credits virtually in the spring and nine credits virtually, sorry, nine in the fall and spring, both virtually, if you show up in the summer, you've done your 18 credits, summer you would do, your, you'd be able to eligible for your CPT. For other programs, it's still the same. You have to arrive physically in the United States and establish one academic year before you're eligible for CPT. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thanks. So I guess the students had got a lot of good information. Like it, it, it's like gold for them to you know come straight straight from the ISSO. Like even if you would have answered it, they would have still have the question mark in front of them. But yeah, today it got a be got a lot of better. And it, this webinar, I guess students will take a lot of out of this. And um, I'll just uh, move ahead and just take some yeah. general questions. If if I require, I might I might ask you or Katie to answer a few questions if they are related to you. And um, I just want to le let the guys know in the, the call that uh, we uh, as the ISC officers are like a group of 25 to 26, 26 people and we are from different different streams and courses and department. So by the time your buddy program uh, gets get started, you can either reach out to us uh, for any questions and we'll be sharing that list of officers and their uh, department to you on on your WhatsApp group. So make sure that you are on their on their WhatsApp group. If you're not there, just let us know in the chat so that we can post the link here and you can just join it or we can just redirect you to a person who can add you. So so that's it. Um, we have few questions here. Uh, uh, how does the eight week versus 16 week schedule work? Like, would there be a, a more lectures, academic hours in the eight week schedule compared to 16 week? Not sure. Okay. So Rajas, uh, what what she meant from 16 week and eight week was like when you start from August, you have 16 weeks uh, till you complete your uh, semester, like uh, till you complete your uh, graduation. So uh, like your four semesters. Uh, sorry, your uh, your particular uh, particular uh, fall semester, right? And uh, if you come at come in between the semester, that is the October 12th, uh, you have the eight week session uh, remaining after that. And that is what you you might be allowed to have on campus uh, from after 12th of October. It depends on your academic department and your uh, like like how uh, Josephine said that JSOM might be able to switch swift swiftly move back with that that kind of role for students, but nothing is sure at the moment. But it all depends upon how the consulates responds and how you get it. 
so university has not mailed you anything but this is the kind like if you can go and see in your academic calendar you see that first 16 week session and the se first eight week session and the second eight week session mm -hmm. so the first eight week starts from august to october and the second eight week from october to uh, your de like december start of december so that is what it actually means and uh, talking about cpd does this rule applies to system engineering uh, samir uh, and anybody else who has this question can just go ahead and i'll just post the link again uh, it has a lot of questions about which major and which department is allowing the cpt if you start the uh, semester online and um, I, and also in the meantime um, one of one of our officers would be sharing a google form we just want your information about what you guys are thinking and so that we can be better uh, we can better provide your help uh, at, right starting from starting from today before the buddy program gets into place. So we are trying to get the buddy program as soon as possible, uh, as, as early as possible. And uh, I, we can see in the chat that Sharda has posted a Google form, uh, which we can, uh, which you guys uh, please go ahead and fill it so that we can better assist you going forward. So you guys have like, you can see Gotham, you can see Sharda, Mohammed. There are a lot of, a uh, lot of people who are here to help. So these are ISU officers along with me and um, there are there are few more than that who are still in the call and you can see in the groups also we have made there are a lot of people so just just pull up uh, put your message in the groups whatever you want we also have our upcoming well like we are we might have another webinar or we might have two or more webinars it's not decided yet but we might come with different agenda and different topics to choose upon like if somebody something happens in the university and some changes that need to be thrown light upon we'll just come and speak about those topics so um i guess we can start taking few more questions before we end the call because uh we are out of time so whatever questions you have given us we have noted that down and we'll be making an faq with the answer which we'll be sharing on email or on the whatsapp group so just just make sure you're all on the whatsapp groups and the facebook group uh mohammed in the meantime will be uh, look, uh linking you uh, sending you the links of all the pages uh, of our isa where you can get the updates so make sure you follow our social media channels and our WhatsApp groups so that you get all the informations. Yes, uh, Mohammed has uh, posted the Facebook group, the Instagram link and the Twitter. Uh, so we usually are active on Facebook and Instagram more. So make sure that you join the group and the page and uh, look out for the updates. And uh, yes, yes, uh, Kirtana, even if you if you have gotten an admit, you can you can go ahead and join the group to get the updates. It's not restricted that if you if you only have the update, you can uh, just, uh, you know, and uh, I also had uh, see go went through the FAQ that FAQ form that we sent last night. And there was certain questions that I would like to talk about, like uh, there is any uh, date for deferment. So the first September is the date which for before which you need to do your deferring uh, for your uh, for your semester and um, when do we have to pay the fees? So the, for the fees, uh, you can refer to the academic calendar as mentioned on the UTD website and uh, there are the deadlines. So there are a number of options. You can also opt for a installment plan as well. Uh, for that, uh, just refer to the academic calendar. It's very, uh, it's very extensive and you'll find all the information over there. And uh, how much percent of Prajwal? Can you be more specific? Uh, we have the windows should be applicable if one defers to spring. So uh, for this, uh, 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 what I read on the websites and everything for the, it's the link which you can follow, which shares just uh, shared. Uh, it's the question which has been uh, answered over there in the FAQs. So for JSOM students, uh, it's basically that they can be eligible if one opts for online and then continue for their offline. But for the ECS people, for the Eric Johnson engineering backgrounds, uh, that is not applicable what I from what I have heard. So mm -hmm. we just keep just ensured with the department. Uh, so Nevedita, as you as you mentioned that if one defers to spring, then uh, if you come on campus in spring, you can you'll be you'll be like uh, getting along with how the spring guys uh, go along. Mm -hmm. Like they have their internship okay, yeah. starting the next spring. Mm -hmm. So they're eligible next spring. So that won't that won't change. And um, and also a uh, fees for a whole semester, yes. Like it depends, like uh, you can enroll in the installment plan or you can just pay for the entire semester. Mm -hmm. And um, when can we start enrolling? Oh, um, uh, I guess the enrollment has started. You just have to uh, text your academic advisor 
and he'll enroll you on your behalf like you just have to mail them with, with the steps and you'll be start, you'll be uh, getting uh, started to enroll and is it possible to get rata positions in first year uh, it's completely uh, department based uh, it's slightly difficult it's slightly difficult in the first year to get one because uh, your academic standings and all needs to be uh, very well so it depends on the department uh, like uh, and professors that you will yeah, you know like you are in touch with in jsom like i uh, specifically i am from jsom and in jsom you need to have like you need to serve one semester on campus like or or i don't know or virtual but you have to complete one semester and then you are eligible for an ra or ta which will uh, which will be uh, like uh, which will be a assistantship on campus and since you will be in india there are a lot of formalities that go once you get an employment in the us you have like like josephine mentioned you have to have that i9 form you have to go apply for an ssn ssn that is a social security number like how we have aadhar card in india it's just same but then uh, it, it's slightly different it, uh, ssn uh, we won't be given to each and everybody like how aadhar is given to everybody but ssn only be, uh, be given to the people who have jobs so once you get an offer letter from the university you have to go to the ssn office and then you have to do all this formality so it is a long process so i'm not really sure that you will be allowed to get an rata in the first semester but uh, if you arrive in spring for the classes you might get one so that is entirely depend on your uh, on on your academic profile and your department so there are a couple of questions about uh, getting in touch with your academic advisor so i don't think so you can get in touch with your academic advisor right now because there's a graduate uh, uh, like uh, advisor like it is like uh, it's overall and uh, he or she would get uh, you can get in touch with the he or she like there might be communication from your department from some uh, uh, person he or she will be able to answer the question best because uh, advisors are uh, pertaining to your concentrations which you choose so once you get you get your subjects uh, selected and once you get your concentrations done then you'll be have a academic advisor whom which you can you know guide you throughout your academic year so the best uh, person to contact with is the advising head or the department head from where you have been getting the mails uh, for now and uh, josely i just say is there an additional fee for virtual classes uh, like there usually is a uh, 200 dollar fee for online classes but there is not any official uh, announcement from any reduction or increase in fees for for the same you might be getting all this information uh, once the university uh, like you start uh, getting get, get started with payment of fees and uh, taman jyot if we have a ta offer and we defer what will happen to the offer i guess it depends really depends if you would be arriving to the us uh, then they might allow you to have it or else they might put a hold on your uh, on your uh, on your bursar's account uh, saying that you had a ta but since you didn't arrive they might apply that they might not apply that uh, privileges on your account so uh, you have to contact your department regarding that for uh, sachin here uh, phd chemistry students so sachin uh, this is a question which is pertaining to your chemistry branch and uh, i think the mentor menti form which mohammad just oh, shared would be the ideal place where you can get your answers for uh, yeah. yeah somebody wanted to speak uh, uh if we can you know mute yeah is it from the team is it okay uh i guess uh, Uh, did you guys fill out the form which was sent in the in in the middle? Yeah, mentor menti form will uh, address all of your questions uh, pertaining to your academic uh, uh, standings and everything, uh, whatever questions you have related to your streams and concentration areas. So uh, yeah, that will be the best place to get your answers. Uh, okay. Do you suggest on campus housing or off campus housing? It's completely on your choice. Uh, on campus housing does have its benefits that is very near to the uh, university and all but uh, off campus housing uh, saves you some extra bucks uh, because it's slightly cheaper than the on campus housing and although off camp off campus housing is not in too much of a hassle because you have bus frequencies every 20 30 10 20, 10, 20 minutes and 30 minutes so it's not a very big issue so it's completely depends on you uh, like um, how much I don't. I just like to say that uh, about the mentor mentee form. Uh, don't worry. Uh, we'll be sharing the PPT with you, and uh, in the PPT there is the form link. Uh, as well, I'll be sharing a message in which we'll have the form link. Uh, so if you can't find it right now in the chat, it's okay. We'll send it again to you, and you can fill it then. Uh, Katie. Uh, if I'm not wrong, can we uh, forward a mail with the buddy program link from ICP to all the students? 
Yes, if you send me the information, I can send it to all the, the same students who I mailed this information to. Perfect, perfect, sounds perfect. So uh, uh, guys, like, don't worry about it. We'll be sharing all those details. Uh, it would come from ICP and it will also come in the WhatsApp groups, which which we have. So and Sharda is also sending a form which will which which uh, which uh, which takes in all your details. So if you if you want uh, that you you will be updated with all the details that happen uh, events on campus. So that so just fill out the form and we might also send uh, the form on this list. Who all fill this form, which is uh, right away uh, right now in the chat at the bottom of the screen. And uh, I guess we can't answer all the questions today. But we'll, we'll make sure that we copy all your questions and put it in the FAQ document, which we'll be sending you to. So for that uh, we request all of you to join our WhatsApp groups uh, so that it be easier for you to guys to you know, communicate with each other and everyone. And Suraj, when can we expect to receive any information? Like uh, very soon, very soon. Don't worry. Like we are trying very hard. So once we get your information, we have the mentors information. We just needed your information. So as soon as you start filling the form, we'll start uh, you know matching you with your mentor. So. You're good with that. Thank you guys. Uh, I guess we are at the end of our webinar today. Thank you for joining. Again, I thank Katie and Josephine to take your valuable time on a weekend and coming and helping us with the webinar. And I thank all the IC officers who were there with me and on the chat box and, and are helping in that regard in various ways possible. So thank you so much. And uh, we will be hoping to have questions to come in and we, uh, yes. And once we get more clarity on how the semester is going to pan out, so keep uh, keep an eye on that, and then we'll reach out to you definitely. And, and then, then just uh, be in touch with us through the WhatsApp and uh, Facebook groups that we have shared with you. Yeah, awesome. one more thing. We are safe. We are happy. Don't worry. Uh, if the situation is control in control right now, and uh, like don't worry about anything. Uh, it is all good and uh, we look forward to meeting you guys. Thank uh, you. Shesh, one more thing. Uh, I would just like to tell, uh, I just like you to tell them that, uh, okay, I'll just tell them <laughs> that we will be sharing the webinar recording as well as we have yeah. the webinar recording. Plus, uh, this is the only first webinar. We are going to have more webinars with more information. Uh, as soon as we get more information collected, we will come back again with the same thing. Mm. Uh, so just uh, stay tuned on the WhatsApp group and on all the social media sites. Wherever I, wherever you can find ISA, you you just ask there. We will be there to answer you there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you me. for joining. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Wow. Time to break.